Hi, and welcome to Visual Art Photography. I'm Ray Scott. You've probably heard of something called the golden hour. Some people call it sweet light. Anyway, it makes no difference. What it is is that sweet light that you get in the early part of the day and in the late part of the day. Now, when I do landscape photography, I don't often go out in the middle of the day in bright sunshine. I find that my photographs don't turn out too well when that's the case. I will use bright sunlight sometimes if I'm doing black and white photography because then you get those deep shadows and you can get some very dramatic effects. I sometimes use overcast skies. That can create really nice diffused lighting, which is great for fall photography, and it's also good for when you're shooting flowers. But when I want that really warm feeling and those really long shadows that add a three-dimensional effect to your photographs when they when you get those shadows that add depth early morning light or late afternoon evening light is fantastic it's warm it's golden it's really effective in creating good landscape photos So today what we're going to do is go through some photos and some techniques and some tips to create really good golden hour kind of photos. Now recently I was out with a buddy early in the morning, well before the sun rose, getting out to our location so that we could shoot some early morning sweet light photography. Now the first tip is if you're going to be doing this kind of photography, make sure you know what you're going to be shooting. In other words, do some reconnaissance be at the location during the light because if you go there without knowing what it looks like and it's in the dark you won't see anything right so make sure you know the location beforehand which is what we did we knew where we were going we had been there before I knew what I wanted to shoot in my mind before I even went so going there well before the Sun rose in the dark wasn't a problem also tip number two sometimes I shoot before the sun rises or after the sun goes down. But that's not what I was looking for today. I was looking for the sun to be up in the sky so that I could get the light against my subject so that I could get the long shadows. All right, so let's get going with that and take a look at how to do some golden hour photography. Your questions and comments can be addressed down below. Let's go. So this is how it appeared as the sun was rising and it had just risen and you can tell because it's not even high enough to put light on the beach here it's just shining at the top of the trees and a little bit on that on that sand dune so we said the first tip do some reconnaissance make sure that you know what's out here beforehand it just makes your life a lot easier as opposed to stumbling around in the dark tip two shoot after the sun has risen or before the sun sets, because what we're trying to do is we're not trying to capture that twilight effect. What we're trying to do is use the sun because we want that warmth. And in this case, I wanted it to be hitting that sand because sand is already kind of a warm thing. And then you get that golden hour light and it just turns everything into some beautiful, warm color. Okay, tip number three, use a tripod. It's not absolutely essential. You can bump up your ISO. You can use image stabilization. But you know something? When you use a tripod with this low light type of photography, it just gives you so much more flexibility. And make no mistake about it. When the sun has just risen, while this looks bright, it is actually quite dark. And if you want to use apertures like F11 or F16 or maybe even F22, it really helps if you can uh, use a tripod, all right? That way you can keep your ISO low at 100 or 200, something like that, and you have less digital noise, all that kind of stuff, and you get some really nice clear images. So bring a tripod if you can. Also, uh, try to bring a variety of focal lengths. Now, if you have a zoom lens, that's great. You know, you can go from wide angle to mid, uh, mid telephoto to telephoto, whatever, but try to have a bit of a variety. This particular shot was done at 70 millimeters on my tripod. All right. Tip four, or rather tip five, look for those long shadows. Now, the reason why we're doing it at this time of the day is because we want the long shadows. And look at the way that shadow just rakes across from left to right. It adds depth. Look at the shadows in the sand itself. 
depth and also texture. But look at how golden and how warm the sand looks and even the trees. So look for long shadows. They can really add a three-dimensional quality. And if you're not sure what that looks like without, this is not exactly the same shot, but it's, a, it's very similar. And the sun had gone behind clouds. And that's always a big fight, right? Because you kind of want a clear morning. You don't want too much cloud around, otherwise you're going to get something like this. And while this isn't bad, and there is a little bit of sun there and a few little shadows, you don't get that depth. You don't get that warmth. So uh, look for days that, you know, don't have too much cloud so that you can, you can get what you want. But you really do want to look for long shadows. This is something that I call the spotlight effect. And it happens when the sun has just risen, when it's not too high in the sky so that it's lighting up everything, all right? Um, and of course, it has to do with subject matter around where you're shooting because there was a, a higher sand dune to the left out of the frame of, out of the picture frame and it was causing the shadow to come across. But look at the spotlight effect. You get that, the tree is lit up and a little bit of the sand and those, and the vegetation to the right. It's just like a spotlight effect and it can add so much of a dynamic quality to your images. Also be on the lookout for clouds if there are a few clouds. And I just, I just did a tutorial recently on long exposure photography where the clouds uh, appear to be in motion and they, they get kind of, you know, they're not defined, but you don't always want to do that either. And this, I wanted to have the clouds defined because they were so wispy and so nice and they had a, a really gentle quality. So I thought that worked out pretty well too. So you want to be on the lookout for what's up going on in the sky too. Also, don't be afraid to put the sun in your image. Now in this particular shot, it really worked out well for me because the sun had gone behind some very thin cloud. So it wasn't exactly, it wasn't too bright in the image. And also the sun was able to come through some of that cloud and give me a little bit of shadow and give me a little bit of detail and a little bit of texture. But again, you look up and look at, look at the, the clouds and how they're working. The trees are soaring up into the sky and it's almost like the clouds are an extension of the trees as it keeps on swooping out up and a little bit to the left. So that was tip number seven, tip eight. And we kind of touched on this before in the last image, and I'll do it again. And it's more of a compositional thing and not so much having to do with the golden hour, but look at the way the tree is moving up kind of in a, in a little bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of swooping up and then the clouds are an extension of the tree, all right? So you want to be on the lookout for that. Nothing to do with the golden hour, but everything to do with composition and being aware of what's going on. And that was just something, I guess I got a little bit lucky, but I was moving around from left to right and I couldn't quite get the thing. And then I thought I finally got the position I wanted for the tree and everything else that was in the image, plus the clouds. And it's like the clouds are almost an extension of the tree. The golden hour, look how warm it is. And that light goes quickly but I got a good hour of shooting in. And maybe getting up early in the morning isn't for you. And of course you can always do the same kind of thing at the end of the day. But the most important thing is to get out there and be prepared for your golden hour photography. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.